Sorry, I'm running a little bit late. Um, I've been working diligently on trying to get this code to work, but because I am terrible at coding, um, I'm gonna have to rely on some people that know better, so I'm gonna have to wait later, for later today for them to edit the code and send it to me. Um, so in the meantime, let's uh, review the uh, prints, the, the design changes that I made, and the prints that I most recently made, which is the goggle frame and then the iris mechanism box dilios. Uh, first off, we'll start with the uh, frame and I'll use my little tweezers to point. So the biggest thing that I think is a good change um, is we have now these little um, grooves cut out that help locate on a similar groove on the iris box because before you had to glue the base down from the iris box into the goggles not knowing where it was supposed to be located and then try to get that to be rotated properly with the linkage and then have the eye open and then have the travel just right. So there's a lot of just kind of fine tuning and gluing it together and pulling it back apart. Well now, um, there's a lot less guesswork. You just kind of, I, this one goes over here. You just take this and line up the two grooves and then bam, that's in the right spot. So I think that's gonna be a significant change whenever people are putting these together, it'll help them get everything just right the first time. Um, also, we'll go back to the goggles. I made this groove quite a bit wider. So you can see here, um, I made a mark down here. The wires wouldn't uh, all fit in that small groove. So I widened the groove to give more uh, uh, room for wires. So when we put the foam over it, um, everything runs nice and smooth. Um, I've also opened up um, the area in here so that we can more easily run uh, the wiring harness through here to the uh, LED sensor. Here I drilled a tiny hole and <laughs> because I just didn't had no access through this wall. Um, and that was something that I knew I needed to change immediately. So we now have access to run wires through this channel down into this area here and then out through this window and over the side. Hopefully everything will stay nice and tidy. And um, similarly on the opposite side, I have another uh, big window here to allow access from the Arduino um, DigiSpark that slides in here and then we'll run wires out and then to the sensors on this side. Um, I've increased the hole size here for the servo wires. Um, before I had just these tiny little like ridiculously small holes. I don't know why I put them that small. I just wasn't thinking when I was designing this. Um, but now we actually have room to easily run the wires from the servos down into the goggles themselves. Um, what else? Uh, oh, on this side of the DigiSpark, you can see a big difference here. This uh, slot is much wider on this version and that is because with pins I didn't think of this before but once you solder header pins on and you're we're gonna um, either plug in the the cables for the servos and the light sensors or we can just solder them onto these um, there's no way that was gonna fit in that tiny slot that was just the exact width of the DigiSpark without anything on it so I wanted to give some more flexibility so if someone wanted to do header pins um, this design would accommodate that um, yeah, I think that's about it. Nothing else really as far as the structure changed. Um, they're the same size. Uh, they're just, you know, more accommodating for some of the electronics and some of the stuff that we're doing. All right, now let's move over to the boxes. We talked a little bit about this tab um, that is now in the bottom um, to help locate it. Uh, another big change that I made was the arm that comes off. I was calling it the igloo <laughs> earlier on because I was thinking I would have a linkage that would fit in between here and I would pin it with a screw or something, and then that linkage would, would pivot. Uh, that was like crazy overbuilt and way more robust than necessary, um, and it, it required some funky supports in here. So what I ended up doing was, uh, basically I only did the bottom half, and I changed the diameter of that extrusion so that it's just big enough um, to put the screw in, but it is still very strong, and you can um, this one's still a bit sticky, <laughs> bad example, but you can still um, spin this without, you know, breaking it off like on the blue ones where they had this arm that was just super fragile. You could hardly move it without it uh, breaking off. These are still very strong, uh, not near as strong as these, but that's overkill. This is, I think, is more appropriate for what we're trying to do. Um, and I did, I already broke it off, but I... In the design, I have a little column that prints right here. Um, that way you don't even have to mess with um, any supports. You just grab the model, drop it down, and print it. And then when you're ready to um, assemble things, what I did was I just took my drill bit and drilled from that side and it broke off the column where you can snip them there. 
Um, but other than that, I didn't do any changes to the actual mechanics of the iris. Uh, again, mad props to the original designer that this, <laughs> it just works really well. It is a little bit finicky, but once you grind everything down, it works pretty smoothly. Um, what else did I do? I think that's about it. Uh, one thing that um, a couple of comments made on the live stream is these prints look terrible, and I completely agree. Um, this one, the temperature was too high, and it was blobbing. Uh, I guess that's the big thing. The The prints are okay, it's just they're, they're covered in zits, and then this one, the layers look like they're all misaligned or something. Um, and I was kind of diving into that with the settings in Simplify 3D. And I think uh, because these walls, there's there's three layers of the outer shell, the leaf themselves, and then the inner shell. Um, they're essentially thin walls where it's there's a gap. There's, a, there's enough space for a perimeter and then another perimeter, but then there's a gap in between. So Simplify 3D, the settings that I had, it was trying to go back and fill in the gap between the perimeters on each of the, the shells. And I think it was putting too much um, uh, plastic in between those perimeters. And it was causing some of these weird uh, artifacts on the outer side of the perimeter. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with that some today. I'm going to see if I can get that all calibrated and tuned out because that's no good. And uh, I might end up reprinting these because... I mean, they work, but they're not, they don't look awesome. And I want, you know, these to look good. I want my printer to print well. So, yeah. Uh, okay. I think that's it for now. Let me take a look at the comments. Let's see here. IJ20Man says he'd 3D print mechanical arms to pull the lens open. Yeah, I thought of that too. Um, and I might, once I get these uh, linkages figured out, I might do a quick, I mean, that's a super simple um, design. That way people aren't having to find wire and do all that. That's a good idea. I'll probably, yeah, I'll design a little linkage that essentially mimics the arc and then the, the distance. Um, but then you can't bend it. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out. But yeah, that's a good suggestion. I'll figure out how to make that all work. Um, similar to the Steam logo. <laughs> I love it. That's a really cool idea. More steampunky. Um, he also says some black sandpaper would help. Maybe some water with sandpaper. Okay, so I think... The suggestion was to smooth this out, I could just sand it. And that's true, um, but I really don't like my printer to not print perfect. <laughs> so it does work, uh, but if I can change some settings and fine tune it, that's what I'm going to do. I don't want to sand, because I've done that before and sanding takes forever. Savage FPV says, hey mate, uh, sub to you and always see these blinking hours videos. What are they for? Um, essentially, it's just a a pair of goggles that whenever you close your eyes this light sensor sees it and then the iris mechanism is powered by the servo and it blinks uh, for you. Um, it's kind of a random project that I started a long time ago and then made the comment that um, because they were mechanically like you had to pull a string to blink them and I was like that's lame with technology these days we should be able to power them with servos and make it automatic and then someone kind of called my bluff and was like, yeah, I'll do the code, let's rock and roll. And so now that's where I'm at. So we're doing this crazy project all because of the internet and how awesome my viewers are and how cool they are to, to help out with the code. So that's kind of why I'm doing it. Cool, okay, well I think that's it for now. Um, I will definitely be doing some more live streaming today. I've got a couple more projects, more FPV, FPV related drone stuff that I'm gonna be working on. And then also if I figure out a way to concisely uh, explain how to change my printer settings so that it doesn't do this. I'll probably roll through that just to help anyone else who's doing printing and might have the same issue. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.